I was catching up with uh, a client this morning who does similar or at least analogous stuff to, to what I do, um, which is what makes him a client. And uh, I was got talking or thinking about this, just this other video that, that I've been working on, which again, the subject matter of it is itself sort of self-referential. And the thing that I just wanted to capture now has to do with how conventional media and any kind of message has to be orientable, like it has to be uh, have the same kind of uh, structure. And by that, I mean that any sort of message has to be either an ordered tree or nested list. And I'm not really too sure what the difference is between these two classes of structures. I'm sure there's some egghead who can tell me they like fine distinction between these two things. As far as I'm concerned though, they're the same because you have a node and you have another node and then another node. And then the, there's a directionality to it. One, two, three, you know, four, five, you know, six. Actually, that's probably not even the way that it works. <laughs> it does it. The, uh, or, you know, a nested list is sort of like one, you know, two, three, whatever. Um, and when the process, when the uh, structure is flattened, it gets flattened into a sequence and that's sort of what serialization is. And everything, every message, every document, and like even every project, and this is sort of the, the analogy that, um, that sort of got me thinking and made me want to sort of inspired me to, to, to write this down was that in an order tree, like if there's a, if there's a structure like this, or first of all, the order tree is orientable. It's got to have a front and a back. It's got to have a start and a finish. And second, like any kind of more complex structure, like internal referencing or like external referencing, the links between these things have to be kind of sliced and then you have to have a sort of like referent reference kind of a structure in there. You know, and you see this in books and whatever where you've got bibliographies or any sort of intertexts where you've got references to other parts. You've got internal references, you have foreshadowing. So like that's when you're like referencing something in the future that's gonna be later on in the message or in the document. Or you'll have back references, so like, you know, remember on paragraph six when I said blah, 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 that kind of thing. And then you're going to have, yeah, like bibliographic references, so like references to other stuff that came before it. But you sort of have to, you've got a scope. And I think like the, the insight, if I, if I have one at all, is that you can sort of think of every message as, it's if not a promise then certainly like a proposal that for some quantity of your attention, I'm gonna give you something of value. And so then the question is like, how do you fit into the box? Like, how do you fit this thing in there? Like, what are you gonna have to keep? What are you gonna have to cut? And then what order are you gonna have to put stuff in? And one of the major sort of insights that I had a, a few years ago was, and you hear this too, like you hear like whenever people give advice on this kind of subject, they're like, oh, well you just, you just have to prioritize or, but the problem with that is that prioritizing is factorial. That's an exclamation mark. Let's do that. It's the, the, the number of things that you're trying to communicate and the order that you put them in, like the, as long as the order's not completely obvious, is n factorial things, which is huge. So like 
you know, five factorial is 120, six factorial is seven, 720. And so the, you know, coming up with the optimal order for something is a huge, is actually a combinatorially explosive problem. And of the things that go into that, determining like what the parts are in a structure is two to the n things. Or maybe say two to the m because there's, it's a different number. So if you have a bunch of sort of atomic parts, like you got a set of stuff, you have two to the m possible ways to group that that set. And then, you know, you've got sort of recursive substructures of it. And so the problem of crafting message is like the same analogous, at least. It's not identical, but it's an analogous problem to, to, to planning a project or planning any kind of resources because it's the same sort of thing. You got to put it in order and you also have to, like, you put the pieces in order, but you also have to figure out what the pieces are. So this is the order. This is what they are. Two to the n, two to the n. So that is... Uh, that's just the log two, right? Like, that's, uh, you know, the sort of the bits, you know, any kind of uh, you know, sort of, you can sort of, I mean, going back to entropy, like that's, that's the same thing. You know, H is whatever, I can't remember what the, the that's, that's that sad of me that I can't remember what Shannon's uh, equation is. But going back to this sort of, you know, you've got a box, you got to you got to fill, and the box is like your commitment, right? Like what you can actually, yeah, proposal, commitment, promise, whatever. The box is your commitment, like for you, this quantity of attention. You can also say like you know no obligation, uh, and that's probably where like projects differ from from you know just messages in general. Is, you know, you might say well if you don't make it this far, like there's no obligation to proceed, but getting uh, you know, getting to the end of a message such that you've communicated what you want to say. You've got kind of like a budget for attention. You've got like, you've got to continue to be interesting all the way through in order to get it so that people like, you know, get to the end of it. And that is a combinatorial problem. That is like putting stuff in the right order. And then of course you've got like all being relative to uh, to, to different audiences because different audiences are going to respond different ways and in, in large part too because just even like what does the audience know already like what can you leave out like what parts do you do you, must you embed so that they understand what you're saying versus uh, you know what parts can you skip because they're already competent and they and you don't have to explain stuff to them and so like that is not trivial I guess is the point is that that is actually a, a complex combinatorial problem. And it's simple over the set of, of simple things. But when the numbers get high, it becomes a real problem. And so I would say that like, if you're having trouble, you know, communicating and prioritizing either a complex message or a complex project, it's because the parts decompose in an exponential way and the sequence they go in decomposes in a, in a factorial way. Or the order is a factorial way. Anyway, I made a second pot of coffee just to make this video and uh, now I'm going to finish it.